Hi, am I on, Carl? I, uh, I, I just want to make sure that we're that we're recording. Okay. We're going. We're going. All right. Good. Hey, welcome to welcome to uh, the twelfth annual Christmas tree lecture. This is the lecture I meant to give a year ago, but unfortunately I was unable to make it. Um, but uh, better late than never. And uh, I got a lot of uh, stuff to tell you about today that I think is really cool. And uh, uh, and I want you to interrupt me, uh, you know, as soon as you don't understand something, because I want to I want to make sure that, that that you're that you're getting it too. Because you know I waited a year to give this lecture, so I so I'm not uh, you know I'm, I'm I, I'm not as well prepared as I would have been a year ago. Uh, now, last year um, was the year that, that this little book was published, uh, Art of Computer Programming, Volume 4, Fascicle 4. This is just, you know, these are, this is about 120, 120 pages that are someday going to be in Volume 4 of the Art of Computer Programming. And uh, it's all about trees. And, you know, every uh, year my tradition has been at, uh, to give a, a lecture about what's the greatest thing I learned about trees during the year. Uh, well, this is the greatest thing I learned about trees last year. But, uh, but in this book, actually, um, uh, I, I wanted to mention it now because it makes a, a, a marvelous Christmas present. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if somebody asks you what you want for, want for Christmas, because it, it, in here it contains the... Uh, the stuff that I talked about in many of these other lectures in this series over the years, uh, that, that w when I first discussed them, uh, in fact, there's even uh, uh, there's even something called the Christmas tree pattern. Well, I, uh, um, on, on this page here is the Christmas tree pattern of order eight, and, and and that was in my lecture I don't know four years ago, and lots of other things I've talked about in this series. Um, uh, come up in the connection of, of this, uh, uh, where, where it's really, uh, you know, in my humble opinion, the best treatment ever of of, 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 of the subject of trees, uh, computer science way, wise. And um, um, anyway, there's a lot of stuff in here that you won't find in any other other books. So there it is. And um, uh, today, however, is something that uh, that doesn't go in the book uh, except. In part, but it's uh, but I uh, I think uh, you'll you'll see why I'm excited about it w once I get into the topic. Now, th my title was uh, trees, rivers, and RNA. And those of you who've been coming to these lectures know that I'll you know that I'll do anything to to get an audience and and and, and, and make up a, a catchy title. Um, so if you're here to you know, to, you know, with, with the idea that I'm going to solve one of the great problems of human health or something by, by what I tell you today, um, I'm sorry. This is pretty much a, a, a pure math lecture today. Um, it's a topic in combinatorics that, uh, and, and mathematics, but my motivation is that, that uh, we found a mathematical concept that's discussed by people in, in many different parts of this campus, and uh, in fact, it's appropriate that that um, I'm giving a lecture here in this uh, in Skilling Auditorium, right next to the geology building, because the whole story started uh, when some geologists uh, were were trying to find nice mathematical models of river systems. And uh, in 1945, a man named Horton uh, was the first to, to to publish this mathematical model, which is which, which arose in, in 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 other connections that I'm going to be show uh, be showing you. Now, um, well, let, let me show you actually what what Horton. Let's see, I think I found his. Uh, so, that's the that's rivers. Uh, uh, I can show you the. Uh, Illustration from Horton's article, Bulletin of the uh, of the uh, Geological Society of America, 1945. He, he's taking a, a river bed, a ri river basin in Georgia, and 
and and he he has this uh, this idea that you that you take all the little the 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 littlest uh, starts to rivers and you call them rivers of order one, and then when there's a junction between um, two rivers of order one, you're supposed to get a river of order two, and then when there's when a, when a two joins up with a one, it still stays a two. But if a two meets a two, then it becomes a three. If a three meets a one or two, it stays a three. But if a three meets another three, it becomes a four. And so, uh, so he, he, he sort of go, goes, goes on and does this. But he didn't, he didn't do it in the way that, uh, that was cleaned up later. Uh, uh, because after, after, after the whole thing w was done, he, he's got this big, you know, Hiwassee River. Uh, and then he decides, well, now let me see, I'll, 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 um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go look at this river and see which, uh, w w uh, where it really originated. And he, then, he, then he brings this four back into the, in, in, until one of these ones is actually called a four back here. And he said, this is really the source of the Hiwassee River. Uh, no, mathematically, we uh, uh, no, they stopped doing that. Um, uh, and a, a sequel to this paper came out in, in the same journal in uh, 1952. Um, and uh, uh, where where uh, the man said, uh, uh, and, and this author was was named Strahler, and he said, let's not let's not use this uh, uh, let let's let's not make the model more complicated, uh, that we, where we have to to go back and look at, look at the angle in which ri rivers join up with each other or anything. We just keep this this idea that uh, if that, that we start out with ones and then when two ones meet, they, they form a two and so on, and. Uh, uh, a lot of what I tell you today, I learned from uh, a man I met last year, uh, uh, a uh, uh, extremely interesting uh, m mathematician uh, named Vino, um, and uh, uh, this is a preprint of a paper he published in 2002. Um, I had been wanting to meet him for a long time and, and finally I got, uh, we, we happened to both be at a workshop in Sweden for a couple of weeks and we got to work together. And, uh, and I, I've been wondering, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of things he writes I, uh, are in preprints and then he never, they, they never come out in, in print. Well, it turns out he's a, he's a very colorful character, bon vivant. Uh, mathematics is, is just one of the many interests in his life. I have no idea how many uh, other, uh, they keep, I kept learning more about him every day. But, um, uh, but among other things, uh, 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 he has, he, he, he owns a, uh, lots of land in Bordeaux and, and, it, and, and has lots and lots of, uh, of uh, vineyards and, uh, and so he's a wine grower and connoisseur. I think he also is a local mayor or something in, in, his, in his village and, and uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I was wondering, uh, half of his papers uh, go by, by G. X. Vino and half of them go by X. G. Vino and I always try to have my book correct and I didn't know what, what, his, what, his, what his real name was so he wrote it out for me here, Gérard Michel François Savir Vino, and uh, and people call him Savir, uh, uh, and so here he signs some of his papers with you know names in sort of random order. Um, now now he, um, but but uh, uh, can we zoom in on this? Uh, how close can you get? Uh, go to the max on this. This is he, he drew this of a river network in the, in, the, in the neighborhood of Bordeaux where he, where he lives, and I, if you can see some of these numbers on here, so he's he's found the the Horton Strahler number now of of this river system, uh, and you see how it builds up to twos here, and then then uh, two twos come together and make a three, and then eventually we get to a five, to five coming together, and this at the end is the is the big uh, river. Okay, now um, uh, computer scientists. Uh, uh, so, so anyway, Horton and Strahler did their work in the 40s and 50s. Computer scientists uh, weren't born yet, but uh, but as soon as we started writing compilers in the early 60s, uh, we came across the same concept, but in another another disguise. We, uh, we had a problem of trying to write compilers, 
And the question was, uh, how many registers do you need to evaluate um, an arithmetic expression? So um, if you have an expression like, uh, you know, a, uh, a times b uh, plus c, you can do that in one in one register. I mean, you, you put a times b that that goes into a, that goes into a register, and then you can add c. Well, depending on your model of computation, but if you but if you if you have to add a plus b a times b plus c times d, uh, you've got two things that each need one register for them before you can do the adding, and so it's going to take you two registers. You got to have one register for a times b and one register for c times d. And so we, you know, we, we ran across this. Uh, you, you, you take a, an arithmetic expression, and, and it's really a, it's really a binary tree formed out of, of binary operators. Um, and when when, when uh, a, 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 a three register expression is met by a two register expression, you can do it in three registers because you can do the two register. I'm sorry, do the three register. Ex uh, Expression first, and then use you know put it put it in one of your registers, and then you've got two registers to uh, uh, to do the other one, and then you can add, and, and you've only used three three registers. But if you've got a three register expression with a three register expression, this is order four. You got to you got to go to four. So we had the we had this concept of the um, the, the register number for an, an, a binary tree uh, for for evaluating a binary tree. Well, and in, it was in that context that uh, mathematicians started studying. The question: If somebody gives you a random binary tree, how many registers are you going to need? You know, or how how common is it that that you that you can get by with just a few registers to evaluate um, an expression? Um, and it wasn't. I think Vino is the guy who discovered uh, somehow that uh, that these uh, these geologists had had already come up with the equivalent concept when they're studying rivers. So um, uh, now. Um, while I'm talking about Vino and, and my book, I want to show you an illustration that I like here, because he and some and some friends of his realized that uh, you could also use this for drawing trees. Computer scientists you know, like to like to, to make pictures of of, of binary trees, and uh, and he realized that if you that that if if you've got this. Uh, uh, this Horton Strahler number on a tree, uh, it, it, it helps you make uh, draw the tree in a way that looks realistic. So, so, so here I, I've got these, these pictures where, uh, where I start out and the leaves are just, you know, uh, uh, simple things of order one. And then when two leaves come together, we get a, a stem that's a little bit bigger. And, 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 and two of these stems of order two join up, they'll get a thicker stem. And so, uh, uh, you can you can make a nice way to create uh, biological looking trees from your computer trees uh, with, with with a very simple uh, thing which is explained here in exercise 124 on page 47 of this wonderful book uh, uh, and it says and, and here it says you know um, uh, you, you, you want to choose the, thick, the, the width, and the width, the width here is three plus the order. So, so, so if you have a something of order k, you make it three plus k y. You make the, the length, the height of it, 18 k. Um, and then, uh, if you have two things coming t together, uh, you, you you bring them in at 30 degree angles, or you, you know, it's just a function of 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 the order of things as to how you join things up. And uh, and if you have a if, if you have a, like a three uh, tree meeting up with a four tree, then uh, th then you have a function that says uh, uh, how much should you bend for the four branch and how much should you bend for the three branch, and and here's a uh, a formula that uh, uh, th that seems to work nicely. And so I got these I, I got these pictures of trees and and, uh, and and Vino and three other authors published in the SIGGRAPH proceedings from 1989. This picture of some trees that they uh, it was in color in the in the actual proceedings, but you know they they make up these trees with their ma mathematical model, and and it, you know they look like pretty much like a photograph, and you have different versions that they that they got. Um, now here, uh, in fact, here I took a random binary tree, you know, all all uh, with a hundred nodes, all all trees binary trees of a hundred nodes. Uh, uh, equally likely, and uh, if you take a random one, uh, it tends to look like this, uh, you know, pr pretty much uh, 
uh, uh, like a vine uh, growing this. On the other hand, if you, if you take a random binary search tree, so so in, instead of saying that all binary trees are equally likely, but but say instead uh, a, 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 a binary tree gets a probability associated with how often it occurs when you when you insert uh, keys one at a time according to the, the standard way of, of, of doing a binary search tree, uh, then uh, the tree you know tends to be pretty well balanced and and, and it's it, it's it's got you know log n uh, you know the average uh, distance to the leaf is about two log n. Well, in the in in, in the other case it's proportional to the square root of n. Um, and so here's a, uh, a, a, a an example of a random binary search tree, what it looks like when you when you draw it with this uh, Strahler number uh, heuristic, and this is something. This is a special tree called the Fibonacci tree, which is a, which is a special uh, a special case where the Fibonacci tree of order eight has two branches, which one of which is the Fibonacci tree of order seven, and one of which is the Fibonacci tree of order six, and 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 that that it makes such a beautiful pattern. I mean, I. I I, uh, uh, I, I I just love working with computer graphics because you, you get left brain, right brain uh, working together, and you can, you can you know even your bugs look beautiful when you when you when you're doing that when you're working on on graphics. So uh, uh, okay, so for computer scientists we've got these these numbers uh, both because they they mean the registers to evaluate expressions and because they help us draw nice looking trees. Um, now the uh, an amazing thing happened, uh, and it was again Javier Vina uh, was supervising a uh, the uh, um, the PhD thesis of a uh, of a student, and her name uh, is beautiful. I I, I, I got to get it right. It's something like yeah, Muriel Vaucheson de Chaumont. And she wrote her PhD thesis in 1985, I think. And, it, and in, in the course of doing this, she discovered that the same, that, that uh, um, uh, an equivalent concept occurs in, in biology, uh, for example, in RNA. And that's the other part of my title, Trees, Rivers, and RNA. Um, and I, and, uh, and here's, the, here's the deal on... on um, and here's a, I got this out of a journal of biochemistry from the early 80s uh, as an example of, uh, of uh, you know, to, to show uh, we, got, we got basically forms huge molecules and they're planar. Um, and, uh, the, and, and, uh, the, and the fact that they're, and they don't have loops, you know, the, the molecule doesn't, doesn't join onto itself. So it's a tree, uh, and and we can actually think of it as a, as a tree with you know with the, with many branches. And so uh, now here now here's a here's a very natural mathematical model for dealing with uh, with such things like uh, uh, huge molecules that occur. We uh, we say that a filament is a is a branch uh, of a tree that has where. Um, Everybody has just one child until we finally get a leaf that has no children. You know, but then, you know, maybe maybe there's another filament over here. Um, and so, so anyway, we let's let let, let, let me draw um, a, a more complicated thing, uh, which has some branching coming off here. Um, I can go on all day and draw this, but. Uh, uh, the idea here is that we can we can take our we, we can take filaments and remove them. Uh, so I chop this off and I chop this off and I chop this off and this and this this and the and this and then I'm left with well in this case just a spine of of of, 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 of these four nodes survive here and. and but, but but take away all the filaments. Uh, but in a more complicated case, uh, I would have had more, you know I, I would have had a little bit of branch more more problem here branching. So 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 I remove this guy and this guy, then I would have had a branch here. So so then in the second second stage, I would remove these three filaments. I have one guy left. And so 
there's there's the so-called pruning order of the uh, of a uh, of a large molecule or of a large uh, a, a large tree, saying how many times do you have to repeat this process of removing filaments until you get down to the empty uh, until you get down to the empty forest. So um, uh, and and, and Muriel. Uh, uh, Vaucheson <laughs> discovered the, the incredible fact that the number of forests that have pruning order K and N uh, nodes to them is equal to the number of binary trees with N nodes that have Strahler number K. So the same thing that occurs in this river process uh, is uh, is actually occurring in the air. Now, you might think that that's obvious because they, they somehow see, seem a little bit like each other, but the more you look at it, uh, the more the more amazing that, that fact occurs. Um, now, uh, and there's, just, there's some good stories that go, go with that, but first let, let, me, let, let me give you some quantitative some quantitative picture, and, and let's, let's actually start out by but by looking at the smallest cases, uh, the case n equals three is is always good to uh, to go with. And so I have I have five binary trees with n equals three. One of them looks like this. One of them looks like this. I mean, in a binary tree, every node has two branches, one of which might be empty. Uh, uh, and and uh, so it could you know, this, is this way. Uh, this over here and this like this, and, and I could put I, I could show the empty the, the empty branches on the other sides to, to get it. But anyway, the, there are these and and uh, uh, well um, you see that uh, the, the Strahler number here is, is one, and then a one meets a zero uh, and stays a one. Uh, here's a and, and so these are one, but here's a one meeting a one c comes up with a, with a two. All right, so. Uh, if we look at all these at, at these five trees, we see that one of them has two at the root, and the other four have one at the root. Um, and uh, uh, if I if I did the same thing for the uh, 14 trees uh, uh, when, when n equals four, uh, uh, it would turn out that six of them have two at the root, and and uh, and the other eight uh, have one at the root. Um, now you can't get up to th you, you can't get up to three with a binary tree until y you have a certain number of nodes there because you've got to have two twos coming together, right? So the smallest binary tree that's going to have a three is going to have to have two twos, and for those I have to have two ones. So so I have to have seven nodes all together before I get to a three uh, uh, in my in my Strahler number. Okay. Now, all right. Now, um, so here's a table. Um, see that? Um, so for small n here, you see when we get seven nodes, there's one. One of those trees has Strahler number three. Three hundred sixty-four. Two sixty-four of them have have one. Um, if we look at the table here for the if these numbers, uh, some of you will guess what this. Pattern is here in the first column. Uh, some people are guessing and figured out, right? These are powers of two. This looks like two to the n minus one, um, uh, and that's these are the ones that 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 stay one. And you see why it is because you, you you're going zigzag either left or right at each stage. So you got n minus one choices: go left, go right, but but never bring t two ones together. Um, it gets a little more complicated to. Uh, uh, to figure out the t binary trees with Strahler number two, uh, and and so on. But the but if you look at the generating function, uh, it's uh, z over one minus two z. The power the coefficients of that are the powers of two, and then you multiply that by this generating function z squared over one minus four z plus two z squared, and uh, and then you get you know z cubed over some polynomial, and that defines a recurrence of order three. And it's and here's the these numbers uh, satisfy that recurrence. And you go to the next one, you multiply by another uh, another uh, uh, 
function here with another polynomial in the denominator, and the product of these three polynomials gives you the, the generating function for all binary trees with, with a three at the, t at the root. And uh, uh, incidentally, this uh, isn't a random polynomial here. It's, it's, uh, you, can, you can factor it in terms of cosines. This is 1 minus 4z times cosine squared of pi over 16 times 1 minus 4z cosine squared 3 pi over 16, 5 pi over 16, 7 pi over 16. That's why it's a polynomial of degree 4. And that same pattern goes on and on. So people in the 1970s discovered that, that the that, that in order to count how many binary trees have a certain Strahler number, uh, there was some beautiful mathematics uh, uh, associated with these with these things. So as uh, as Ms. Brochusson de Chamon, working on her thesis, uh, 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 Bino said, "Why don't you look at this?" at this model of the filaments and removing filaments that, that uh, his, his friends in biology had shown him. And she discovered, to, uh, to everybody's great surprise, that you got the same numbers uh, for that problem. In other words, the number of, uh, of n node forests, of, seven, of, of, of uh, let's say, 17 node forests, uh, which, all, which go away in one remove all the filaments is, is exactly 65536 in the number, which take four steps to, uh, uh, before you, you, uh, you reduce them to the empty step is 494 and so on. So, so, now, so uh, some, now when, whenever two uh, rather different uh, problems uh, uh, both turn out to have the same answer, it, it's always worthwhile, you know, saying something, something good must be going on and to, and, and to, uh, and to look a little more at the mathematics here. I, I got here another case, uh, n equals 100, just so you get some idea. Uh, so, so take, take all of the, um, the, the binary trees with 100 nodes, and they're the same as the number of forests of, of 100 nodes. Forests aren't binary. They're, they're uh, you know, a forest is, 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 is anything that has no loops in it, and uh, and basically, that's the, that's the rule. Uh, graph with with a hundred nodes and no cycles. Um, uh, and uh, the, the this number here, which you might not recognize as two to the 99th power. Uh, and then you know the case where it's draw number two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, so uh, and these are, of course. Uh, uh, if, if you look at probabilities, then you almost always have a three or a four in a tree in, 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 a, in, in, a, tree, in a binary tree of 100 nodes. You almost always get a three or four at the root. Uh, uh, only uh, you know you get a five here in this case, but you, you divide this by the sum of, of everything, and this is like one. This is like you know one percent of the total, uh, and this is even smaller. So it's really tiny the probabilities. Um, but it's, it's, it looks to me like it might be a log normal distribution, like the, you know, the number of digits in, the, in, in, these, in these numbers is, is normal rather than the, the numbers themselves. So, so it's very, distribution tends to be concentrated on a small number of, of values in, in practice. And um, now, the, now the thing is, since there's, you know, since there, it's the same number, uh, we now said, okay, let's let's now find, and they, they and they and you know, they proved that it was the same number. But you say, well, there must be some way to take any any forest uh, of n nodes and uh, that has a certain prune, that has pruning number k and convert it into a into a binary tree that has Strahler number k, and you know, this would be a one to one correspondence between all the all the forests and all the binary trees. And, uh, uh, and and it would preserve the Strahler number, uh, but they couldn't they couldn't think of any. They th thought of lots of ways. To, there's many many ways known to uh, to, uh, to show that the, the number of forests of n nodes is the number of binary trees of n nodes, but uh, none of those seemed to you know seem to show that it had that that it was doing anything anything with this. So so he decided to uh, to. Uh, uh, to offer a prize of 10 bottles of Bordeaux wine, vintage 1982, uh, to any mathematician who could solve this problem and find a nice, natural, one-to-one -one correspondence between 
uh, between these two concepts. And, uh, and, uh, that, and five years later, um, uh, Doran Zeilberger, another remarkable mathematician, uh, came up with a solution to this problem. And, uh, and now um, I have to mention that uh, uh, mathematicians, when they have a one-to-one -one correspondence between objects, they call them, they call them bijections. Um, I, uh, I learned mathematics when bijection was a scary word and uh, wasn't wasn't bandied around, uh, you know about in in in, uh, in in uh in the popular press or anything and so uh uh i just wanted to say that nowhere in the art of computer programming will you find the word bijection uh in fact i translate a whole bunch of pure mathematics into words that i think are more are less scary or more uh, more uh, uh, um, grounded somehow. Uh, although you know, I be, I've come to admire Bourbaki and everything over the years, uh, who, you know, the, the group that invented these words. But it just didn't seem like me talking about bijections. And so, so although people don't realize it, I actually try to make the art of computer programming easy to read. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's it, you know, maybe I, I I don't succeed. You know, but at least I get a few more readers than if I had been using a lot of a lot of the highest, uh, uh, you know, the the, the most uh, um, egregious uh, terms. So anyway, uh, I um, but but now here I am working with with Vino last year, uh, and uh, and we so I decided okay I will write a a paper uh, with with bijection in the title. Although I, 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 I'm not going to publish it, it's just it's just available on the web. But I do have this paper now called Three Catalan Bijections." So 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 anyway, uh, uh, and I'm going to talk even I'm going to mention them today throughout the, the next few minutes of this lecture. I'm you know, saying bijection, bijection, bijection because uh, because it's you know it's it's a mouthful to say one-to-one -one correspondence all the time. So, so now here so so I want to find a, a, a correspondence between you know that takes any any binary tree into a forest, or vice versa, inverse court command will take a forest into a binary tree, and uh, and it's supposed to have this property that it, that the binary tree uh, has a smaller number k up at the root, then this forest is going to have pruning order k. The number of times you remove move filaments has this has this uh, um, this characteristic. Um, now. <clears throat> uh, uh, before I be, before I talk a little more about bijection, so I I, I, I want to mention what, one other thing because it's an open problem that really uh, uh, is almost uh, scandalous that it hasn't been solved yet. And uh, and uh, uh, Vino says that a lot of his French friends have been have been uh, uh, you know beating their heads against the wall on this problem, uh, although it seems like it should be easy to solve. Um, and that is not only to is to study this this this, uh, this pruning process, the pruning order of, of filaments uh, in detail, and find out what it does. Um, we know, uh, according to the theorem, we know uh, how many how many uh, forests are going to wind up uh, are, are going to need uh, uh, k steps uh, uh, to uh, before they disappear, but. But if, but let's take a look at the at the case of for example take all the forests with 17 nodes, um, and 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 so there's this many 129 millions of them, uh, all have 17 nodes. After one pruning, I, I have uh, uh, you know one of them uh, has only has, uh, still has 15 nodes left. Um, uh, but you know six five five three six are already wiped out. And and uh, this many here, uh, you know, one one million hundred five thousand so on, uh, uh, have only one node left after one pruning. Uh, and uh, after two prunings, and so so after three prunings, you notice there's this strange thing. We got forty. It ends up with four sixty two thirty one one somehow at the tail here. Now the the unsolved problem is, what the heck are these numbers? Uh, we've got a good formula for the generating function at, the, at, at this, you know, at, at, the, at the zero point 
here. But these other numbers, uh, as far as I know, statisticians have no idea, you know, uh, what's going on. As uh, you start out with a random forest and then you and then you prune away filaments two times, how big is how many ha have you got left at this point on the average, or you know, what what kind of a distribution do you have? Um, and uh, it's a, it. it, it I don't know of any other combinatorial problem so simple to describe for which the, the statisticians have no good uh, uh, formula for, uh, for for how uh, uh, you know for for the the, the 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 size not not approximate or anything it's just you know we can calculate these numbers if if n is small enough uh, but uh, if we if we if we take a hundred node forest and we and we and we say well, what happens after after four prunings. Um, uh, what kind of distribution do you get? Uh, I think we just uh, best know is that, well, try simulating it and see what happens. You know, and, and, and I don't think there's even a conjecture as to what the order of growth is of this. Because the, the reason is that after you remove the filaments, as you have at the beginning, you don't have a random forest anymore. Some forests are much more likely to occur after than others after after you remove filaments on the first on the first pass. So that's an open problem that, if, that uh, I think deserves a lot more uh, uh, advertisement around in, in, in uh, uh, the non-French parts of the world and, and maybe uh, uh, you know, somebody will figure out how to, how, how to crack it. It's certainly, uh, it's certainly uh, uh, so something that if I had another lifetime and didn't have to write the out of computer program, it's certainly I would like to take part in solving. Um, uh, I, you can look at it in this way. I, you can put a one on, on these. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a minute uh, uh, something that's related to this problem. So anyway, these are, this is this is a fascinating uh, unsolved problem that that seems to me sh should be solved. Such a simple mathematical model. What does removing filaments do? Okay. Now, <coughs> um, bijections. Uh, there's there's two um, uh, the, well okay the, the, let me show you a, a huge number of bijections between forests and and, and trees uh, and uh, uh, I started out with a uh, in in this book I start out with a uh, a random forest uh, that uh, actually uh, I reveal on page uh, 80 something that it, it's based on pi somehow that, to get to this forest, but you have, but they, you're not supposed to. It's not too obvious why. Why? But anyway, this is this is basically random, and I and uh, and, and it's, you see it's a forest because uh, there's no loops to it. And and when I say forest, I, by the way, I always mean ordered forest. I always got an order that you know if I put this guy over here. Um, that would I consider that a different forest. I'm considering the or, left to right order is is important in all these statements I make about forests and binary uh, being related to binary trees. Now, if you've got a forest that has a bunch of trees in it, I want to I want to make that correspond to a uh, to a binary tree. Uh, so there's you know there's I, I I find one node. For example, I can take the, the leftmost tree in the forest and I can look at its root. For example. But I, but, but anyway, I could, uh, so, so, so I've got a, a forest that's got a bunch of trees in it, right? And, and I, and then I, 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 I find one node and I single that out. Uh, for example, I can take that guy, or, or if I had a, or, or I could, I, uh, um, I, I could do something else. Uh, then I, then I find some rule in dividing the rest of the thing into two, in, into two subforests. For example, I could say, Take all of the uh, uh, all of the descendants of of this leftmost root and call that uh, th that'll be a that'll be a forest, and I can take all of the other trees besides the first tree and that's a forest. And then uh, recursively, I, I say that this is going to map into you know the binary tree that you get by by taking this guy A and putting him here, and then uh, and then I th then here I put the Binary tree that corresponds to to this forest, and here I put the binary tree that corresponds to this forest, which might either of these might be empty. Uh, so so anyway, that's one one way to get a correspondence between forest and binary tree, and that's the natural way. In fact, uh, it, it turns out uh, 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 I illustrated here if you if you um, 
if you, if you draw a link to to your leftmost son, uh, leftmost child, and the, and uh, uh, then the right links are to the siblings. So four uh, is has a, a sibling of six. Uh, then the right links go to siblings, and the left and the left links go to the first child. And you get a, a very simple correspondence between force and binary. Three. But you could do you you could do lots of other things. For example, you could say. Uh, you know, choose a node. Well, I, I, uh, you know, I, I could, I, I could choose. I, I have to choose. I have to have some rule that that, that singles out one of the nodes that I'm going to put at the root. And you know, I, I could say, uh, uh, you know, if there are n trees, if there are f you know ten trees in the forest, uh, 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 look at the um, uh, the um, the 28th one, counting modulo 10 or something like this. But just find some way to single out uh, one of the trees and then pick one of its nodes some, some way or other. Maybe the fifth in pre-order or something. Choose it anyway. But then figure out a way to divide the rest into fourths. Suppose I, suppose I still choose the, the, the leftmost tree and its root. But then I could take these and I, and, and before I, and, and before I actually go further, uh, uh, maybe I maybe I uh, will cyclically permute uh, 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 these trees, and maybe I'll, I'll I'll flip these left to right or something like this. Then it get, and and then I apply my recursive rule. There's many many different recursive rules which would, which which would, which would give me uh, the, which would then define this mapping from the forest to the binary tree. Now. It's it's a bijection be, uh, means we can go backwards because if somebody gives me the the binary tree that you got that way, then you can say okay um, uh, by induction I can I can figure out what what forest came from the left subtree and I can figure out what forest came from the right subtree. Well, let me uh, so the one that's on the left subtree I'll, I'll I'll take its mirror image and put it un under here. And uh, you know, I'll take this guy, put him up at, at the root, and and this one I'll cyclically permute, and and I I, I get my original forest. So 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 this is a, this is a, a, a large family of bijection, and and Zalberger, who won the won the ten bottles of wine, uh, uh, came up with a bijection of that of, of that sort, um, which was and and I'll show you uh, actually. Uh, uh, let's see. I, I'll let me let me draw that tree. Uh, let me draw that forest. Um, and um, uh, so I got. It has 15 nodes, so it doesn't take me too long to draw it. Three, four, six. Uh, I'm, I'm use hexadecimal not to notation here. Five, six, seven. A nine, A uh, B is here. With hexadecimal, you got to watch out. The six and B look the same, but that's too bad. Uh, D E F. So, so this is the original forest, and, and then uh, uh, Zalberger's method uh, turns out maps this into a binary tree that c that comes out with one at the root and two uh, on the left subtree. Over here, he's got a three. Um, uh, uh, then a four, um, a C over here, E, D, F, four, six, B, uh, five, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm running out of space. Seven gets to a nine here, and then there's an A, just just enough room for the A there. Okay, so six guys are well. Now, the the main thing is he he took this forest and he divided it up and he decided to to shuffle around some of these uh, some of the structure of the forest uh, and then he said now apply the rule uh, recursively to the subtree and it, it looks almost like the, the the rule that I had before in a way uh, because uh, right links are still looking a, a bit like siblings here. Um, uh, but the um, what's the difference is that well three you know C was a child of 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 three here but here it's a sibling here 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 it's on the right branch instead of um, 
instead of being on the right branch from six. Uh, so anyway, uh, now I claim that this has, this, has the same Strahler numbers and, 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 and pruning order. So, so let's look at the pruning order of this guy. Uh, here's a one, uh, uh, a one uh, meaning that uh, the ver in the first filament, th these two guys go away. Uh, th this has a one and this is a one. This is a one, but the seven is going to be a two because it's got it's got two filaments below it here, and so seven isn't going to disappear in the first pass. So the six isn't going to go away either, and the B is is a one, and um, uh, the D is a one, E and F are one, but C is going to stick around until until level two, and then there's going to be a three here at the root. Um, uh, so if I if I do this pruning of filaments. Uh, everything that's a one here disappears, and the first pass, and all the twos change to ones, and the three change to a two. And then uh, the, the, the next uh, on the next round, the twos the, the, the twos disappear, and the three and, and, and I'm left with this guy. Now at this stage, I can I can compute the Strahler number of this one, and it's a one one uh, one, one here two ones meet each other and form a two. Here I got a one. One, one, two. It, I'm sorry, this is so sloppy. One, two meets a one is still a two. A one is still a two. Two meets a two, that gives me a three here. So I have a one and, and a three gives me a three. So this has a straw number of three at the root. This has a pruning order of three at the, at, in the forest. And that's the, and it, uh, uh, no. Now, um, one thing that, uh, that I did then, uh, while I was working with you know, I, I had to understand uh, Salberg's bi amazing bijection, um, and uh, and so I, being a computer scientist, I, I programmed it, and uh, and I found also which any which always happens when you when you program something that there was a gap in his proof. Uh, you know, it, it turned out that his construction was correct, but uh, but he could have come up with another construction, and his proof would have still said it was correct when his other the other construction wouldn't have been. Uh, so now, in this in this uh, uh, report, I have a I have a program called Zeilberger uh, that uh, uh, that uh, uh, implements his, his his bijection and also uh, checks it. By, by running through all forests with, with a certain number of, of nodes and, and converting them to uh, binary trees, uh, computing by brute force the Strahler number and the pruning order, to verifying that they're the same. And also, I have the inverse algorithm that, that goes from the binary tree and checks that that t takes me back uh, to the original forest. And, uh, and so uh, this, this program, is uh, you know is unambiguous. It, 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 there's no hand waving or anything. The computer understands what this construction is. And while I wrote the program, I noticed a, 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 a curious thing that Zellberger's uh, bijection does. It, it it not only it, it not only preserves the um, uh, the pruning order to Strahler number, but it also preserves uh, the left the left link. So, so every time, so, so the left child of everything in the in, in the forest remains as as the left link in the in the in the tree. Uh, so it uh, so it preserves not it, so, so that says, for example, the number of leaves of the of the um, uh, of the original forest is equal to the number of things that have no left link, link here. So these are the number of, of uh, uh, so, so I can say that not only can I preserve the, the pruning order, but I can also say that the number of leaves here was, is equal to the number of, of left leaves, the number of things here who have, 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 have a null left link in the binary tree. And, and that uh, you know, um, was a, a, a surprising consequence of, of, his, of, of his bijection. Well, uh, I, tr I, I, I don't have time to explain his bijection to you in detail, uh, but it, anybody who's interested can, can download this. It's on the web. You go to my homepage, and, and then it says downloadable programs, 
and and on under downloadable programs, there there's this, there, all three of the, all, all three projections that I'm going to be telling you about are there, uh, uh, and you can you you can play play with the thing to your heart's content. Uh, you know, try it out, uh, make a change, see if it's still you know, see if you can break it, and so on. With the with the uh, enough. Uh, information, I think, to, 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 to construct the formal proof that it actually worked. Um, okay, now, th that's, that's only the, uh, one part of the story. Why do I call this three Catalan bijections? Well, there was um, uh, another man who was working on the uh, Jean Francois. Uh, this is 1984. Uh, the number of, re of registers necessary to evaluate an arithmetic expression, and he uh, uh, noticed that this problem, uh, which was connected to another uh, 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 problem that seemed really, uh, re really different, and so here's a third way in which the same concept, the Strahler number, the pruning order, uh, arises in a natural problem. Yet different from from what from before. Now, when we have uh, 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 I guess uh, let me let me see what's a good okay. Uh, uh, another concept that's equivalent to these binary trees and fours is nested parentheses. And anybody who programs in Lisp language will recognize you know uh, that can we get this on the screen here this. Uh, you know, so, so you got left and right parentheses, uh, uh, and here it turned out there's 15 of each, and uh, uh, and the rule is that uh, it it they're properly nested if the following happens: you, you you start counting from the left to the right, and you go and, and you and you say plus one for every left parenthesis and minus one for every right parenthesis, and at the end you've got to come out with zero, and you can never go negative. And th that's exactly the rule that, that says that, you, that, uh, that the parentheses are properly nested. And so uh, I start out my, in my books showing how this formula, nested parentheses, corresponds to this, uh, uh, you know, this forest that we, this random forest that, that, we, that we had here. And I numbered the parentheses, uh, uh, left parentheses at the top and the right parentheses at the bottom, and that's how come I got the, uh, the numbering of the nodes. But this, this nesting pattern, you find which, which one matches the, the right one, corresponds to a process of, of adding plus one, minus one, uh, finding, a, finding a path. And so here I've, uh, uh, I, I, I've drawn this path for you. You know, go up for the left parenthesis, then down for two right parentheses, and then up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down, up, and so on. This gives you a, uh, a, uh, a, a pattern which is equivalent to the nested parenthesis. Now the French mathematicians call this pattern a, a, a dyke, a, a dick path. Um, after after a German uh, mathematician named Van Dyck, who actually never considered this concept anywhere in his writings, and it's it's one of these vague uh, vague ideas. He considered something else that was vaguely related to a to a symmetric version of a similar problem. But anyway. Uh, uh, they, it, 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 all mathematicians know this pass under this name, which, which uh, is, is historically uh, ridiculous because uh, uh, the person who worked on it uh, uh, was just, you know, he, he just had an interesting name, but he, but he, 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 math, he, he, did, he worked on another problem uh, which, which might r remind somebody of this, and, and Schussenberger was never very much uh, uh, interested in history or getting uh, dotting I's or crossing T's. So anyway, th they call them dick pass. In my book, they're just called nested parentheses. But but uh, the point is, if you have a dick pass, you can. You, it's natural to see. It looks like mountains, and you can see how high is the is the highest mountain in the dick path. And so here's a tree which has you know 15 uh, uh, up steps and 15 down steps, and it's Height is one, two, three, four, five. So now you can say you can ask how many how many binary trees of n nodes or how many sorry nested parent, nested parentheses how many dick paths uh, with with you know pairs of of of, 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 of n pairs of parentheses uh, have a certain height 
And, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, if, if there are three of them, uh, one of them uh, just has height one. It goes, up, it, it just zigzags back and forth. One of them has height two, uh, three, I mean. It goes up and, and all the way and then down all the way. And, and the other three have height two. Um, and similarly, you can, you, can, you can figure out how many... Um, how many dick pads have a certain height, like a dick, dick pads of size 10? Well, here comes uh, the strange punchline, and that is let's group together those of height 1 and height 2 and add that together. You get 4, 8, 16, and so on. Then group together the next four cases, heights 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then you group together the next cases, 7, 8, up to, up to 14. And in general, uh, uh, you know, the next eight cases group these together. Well, it turns out this is equivalent to the number of binary trees with a certain Strahler number. So, so here's my table that I had before. Uh, you know, like here, this number 26. Well, um, 18 plus 7 plus 1 is 26. So, uh, it's the long height of of of, of, of a of a, a group of nest, nested parentheses corresponds to Strahler number as well. And, and, and uh, Francois points this out, and he, and he states in his paper, um, uh, right here at the bottom of this page, uh, uh, to construct a, a bijection, uh, be, uh, you know, sufficiently simple between the set of three uh, binary trees. Uh, and then uh, you want to transform the variable reg, the, the number, maximum number, minimum number of registers, and the variable logarithm of one plus the height of the, of the, uh, uh, of, uh, you know, he, he, he defines this hag function. So, so he says this problem is an open problem. Uh, can't, he, I, I, I know it's true, but I have no idea how to, how to convert a, Set a nested parenthesis with height uh, something something into into a binary tree whose Strahler number is the logarithm of this height of one plus the height. Okay, so um, that's my second bijection, and I have a program called Franson, which uh, uh, which does that. So. Um, the Strahler number then originated in study of rivers. Uh, and, and naturally, uh, you think of a river as a binary tree because uh, rivers come together two at a time instead of three at a time. And then uh, computers, we have algebraic expressions. But then, then uh, uh, the, the pruning order was a, was a natural model in another, uh, another context. Here we have something quite different, the logarithm of the height of a of a pattern of, of nested parentheses. And, uh, uh, it, and so he had an in, in indirect proof which uh, explained why this was in fact mathematically true, but uh, was looking for a, a direct way to, uh, to find a, a bijection between the two concepts. Uh, so here, I'm sorry, I go to Francois. And, uh, I, uh, and so here I run through all of the uh, all of the nested parentheses and and you know do the construction. Now I want to, but but this this is a completely different kind of of, of projection from the other one that we had for forest. And and it's a, I think it's a fundamental. Um, uh, I, I think it's a, it it it, it uh, you know, there's there are books about constructive combinatorics and and uh, uh, nobody has before. Uh, 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 Commented on the on the remarkable difference between be, between two kinds of projections, one of which seems to be uh, going forward and then backward, like this one. I I, I, I make a recursive construction and then uh, and, and and then uh, uh, in in order to in order to get the inverse uh, bijection, I run time backwards, and I say what led to this, and I and and I, and I go from the time from from, from the end. Uh, and, and unwrap it one step at a time until I get back to the beginning with this kind of projection I'm going to show you now. So um, th there's a zillion there's a zillion interesting projections between nested parentheses and binary trees. Um, and uh, 
I and uh, uh, the and uh, under Pro Proskowski, one of our former students uh, published this in ACM Journal in 1980. Uh, here, and here's the idea. Um, uh, so let's take this as a sample, as a sample uh, nested nested parenthesis. Um, and uh, uh, now. Uh, the first step is always up. You can't go down. Uh, you're never supposed to go negative. So the first step has to go up. So that's redundant. Um, and the last step uh, uh, is always down. Uh, but 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 I'm going to extend it by ha adding one more step to go to go down below. I, uh, so so I, I'm sort of take, detaching the first step and putting it on the last step. But but now I, I'm going to I'm going to build a binary tree as follows. Uh, I, I imagine that I'm un uncovering this this nested parenthesis one one uh, uh, item at a time. I, I, uh, first, I'll look at, and it says, "Oh, up, okay," and then down. Now, um, I, I'm, so I'm going to read this from left to right, and um, and I start out with a binary with a uh, so so I, I I put node one as the root of the binary tree, and I and now I I. Uh, I, I choose a link that I haven't yet um, uh, decided whether it exists or not. I, I, um, so, so right now, everything is unknown about this binary tree except that, that it has a root one. Um, and so I choose a link that, that I want to fill in now, and I'm going to choose the, the, the left link of, of, of one. Um, okay, now I, now I look at, at the next step of my path. Oh, it's an up step. Up step says, okay, the link goes in. Down step means don't put a link there. So, so, so uh, uh, you know, so, so this is goes to two. Um, now I choose another, uh, another place where, uh, where I don't know a link. I don't know whether there's a right link here. I don't know if there's a left link from two or a right link from two. But take any, any one that you don't know and, and, and have some definite deterministic rule for figuring that out. And uh, uh, for example, if you if you always choose the leftmost, bottommost uh, unknown one, then you get a depth-first search, and it gives you one course. One, but I'm going to use breadth-first search, so, so I'm going to I'm going to say, okay, let's look at this one next. Is is there a branch here or not? And so the next step is down. So it says, nope. This guy's, you know, th this is a leaf. There's nothing there. Okay. Now I have a not, now I'm 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 going to go. Breadth first here, so I'm going to go left to right by levels in this tree and fill, and fill in the links. Uh, so, so the next step um, uh, is there a, a branch from two to the left? Uh, no, so there's nothing there. Uh, is there a branch from two to the right? Um, if uh, if 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 I stopped going, the, 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 that would be the end, and, and I'd be done. But it, but I'm, I can't stop, so I have to go on. I have to have to get 15 nodes in here, so I'm going to go up, and I'm going to get a three. Now, uh, the next step is ask about three to the left. Yes, four is there. Uh, three to the right, uh, five. Yes, it's there. Five, uh, four to the left. Uh, nope, it's it's not. Four to the right. Nope. Five to the left. Yes. So, so you see how I'm filling this in. Now, um, the point is, I, I, I'll get a binary tree out of this, and each time, and uh, and uh, uh, but now, imagine decoding this binary tree. The, the 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 interesting thing is the decoding process also goes left to right. That that I that I'm not r running time backwards, but I'm running time forward to, in order to decode this. Let Let's try to figure out what what nested parentheses corresponded to this tree. So I start out always. I have the first the, the first nested parenthesis has to go up. Um, so now I I, I I I look and I say, oh, uh, you know, I, I, at the binary tree. Let's suppose I didn't know. Um, uh, uh, what the first step was, you know. So when I look at the left branch. Yes, it's there. So the next step goes up. I look at the right branch. It's not there. So that means I got to go down. I look at the left branch of two. It's not there. So I got to go down again. I look at the right branch of two. It's there. So I go up. So so here's a, here's a, 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 it's a different kind of projection. Time is running forward in both in, in both the encoding and the decoding of the of of, of the thing. 
And this is these projections are somewhat rare. You know, uh, most of most of the time you find a one to one correspondence. You, you, uh, uh, it doesn't work this way. But uh, uh, lo and behold, it does it, it does work. And and uh, and uh, with uh, 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 since time is running out, I've already I've already been spe speaking about an hour. Uh, I can't go into the details except that there's a very interesting way, a very interesting deterministic rule for determining uh, which which link I'm going to be querying at each step. Any deterministic rule you have gives you a one-to-one -one, gives you a bijection. Um, I can run the thing backwards, and uh, uh, and and the, the 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 rule that I actually have is is one that has the property that what, that the that if I start out with a nested thing that has height h, where h you know then the uh, um, the, the binary tree that I construct is going to have a scalar number of uh, uh, of log h basically log of one plus h, and and conversely. Um, and the way I, and, and the deterministic rule for deciding who, which link I'm going to investigate next, uh, I, 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 I keep track of uh, uh, um, a little heap of, of, of partial information about the, sort of the hot, uh, the, the, the items that, that, uh, uh, that could possibly be causing complexity of 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 evaluation of a, of, of a uh, of an arithmetic expression, um, and uh, uh, so if you're interested in seeing how this works, again you can download the program, uh, you know, watch it with your debugger. You can you can animate it, and you can check it out, on, make up make up a binary tree, watch it step by step, and you'll see this this amazing uh, thing going going, and it's uh, it, it's only four pages long, and and, and uh, uh, involves some interesting data structure. So, so this is uh, then what we've, we, uh, what um, uh, you know I said uh, could complete a, a golden triangle of three of, of three things that that, that, that here I have the Strahler number for rivers, here I have the pruning order for forests, and here I have the log height for nested paths, and these all have the same uh, st statistics. The, 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 um, there's ways to, to correspond uh, back and forth between these, uh, between these things. I, there's no simple correspondence known from here to here, but, but, you, but you can apply the, uh, the two. So as, as he and I were talking about this uh, uh, last year, uh, um, we discovered that there's yet another, a fourth uh, mathematical concept, fairly natural, that has ex that again the same concept: Strahler pruning log height. The same distribution occurs, and so I'm going to going to close by mentioning that quickly. And it's and it's described by my my third my third projection, which I named after Vino. Because it, because the basic idea was due to him, um, uh, and and it's a new kind of combinatorial object that that he dis, that he decided to call Kepler towers. So let me now explain to you what a Kepler tower is in, in a minute. Um, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a Kepler tower has a certain number of walls, and it turns out that the number of and and, and bricks. So. It turns out that the number of Kepler towers with n bricks and k walls is exactly the same as the number of binary trees with n nodes and Strahler number k, and similarly for pruning order and and, and so on. Okay, so here's a Kepler tower. Uh, now we're, we're viewing this. We're, we're, it, it, it's a circular tower. And we're viewing it from the top, and these black things here are the bricks. Uh, the bricks. Are, you know, so now there's there's th uh, there's three walls here. Uh, the, the first wall uh, in the center here has has three layers high, and the second wall has three layers high, and the outer wall is five layers high. You see, you see that? Um, and <clears throat> and so and and uh, 
the the inner ring here is the is considered at the base of the wall, and and and, and then it, you know you, you're building up bricks on top of each other. The bricks are curved, um, <clears throat> and the idea is that uh, each brick. Oh, okay, in the first wall, the inner wall, there's just it's divided into two parts. The se the next wall is divided into four parts, and, and the third wall is divided into eight parts, and so on. Um, and so each of the bricks on the third wall it goes one eighth of the circumference, um, but slightly more than one eighth because of, uh, so that uh, because uh, you're not allowed to put two bricks next to each other, they would interfere with each other. But 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 th but this one on the top here is actually resting on on this one. And there's a little strut that supports its other end. Uh, says here, note to construction workers and Lego fans, the walls also contain little struts not shown to keep the bricks of each ring from tipping over. So, so mathematically, the concept is this. Uh, on, the, at, on, on the bottom level of each wall, um, I force the pattern that, that uh, like on the bottom, the bottom level of the, of the third wall is, is Brick, no brick, brick, no brick, brick, no brick, brick, no brick. Uh, it's strictly alternating uh, pattern on the bottom, and and uh, above that, a brick just has to be supported by something below it. So here's the now now, now um, you can describe that instead of drawing this picture, you can also describe it by the numbers. So so the first wall here has numbers one, two, and two. It means that. The brick at the on the lower level is in position one. Uh, on the next level, there's a brick in position two, and and a third level of brick in position two. So that's your first. Uh, that's your first um, uh, wall, the inner wall. The next wall has four slots, and um, on the bottom row is fixed. It's forced to be one three. Then above that is is a brick at position four. And, and above that, it, uh, Brick said position one and three, the four supports a one, and the four also supports a three. Uh, to, to get support um, <coughs> uh, in position P, you have to have a brick in position P minus one or P or P plus one on the, uh, on the, on the level below you. Um, so that's a Kepler tower with, uh, with three walls. And, <coughs> and uh, uh, I and here's a nested parenthesis, or and and I have a correspondence that takes that's actually very simple, uh, runs really fast, and and it's it's um, sorry it's uh, uh, there's the theory explained here, but he, but the, uh, uh, the the coding is less than 20 lines of code uh, to to find the correspondence that takes these things into into Kepler Tower. <coughs> and so, so here's a, a, a very uh, strange thing. We have a mathematical concept that arises in four quite, quite different things. And so there must be, some, there must be something going on and, and uh, mysteries. Uh, uh, you know, maybe you know, next week we'll think of yet another way in which these, uh, <coughs> this concept of straw number <coughs> appears, and uh, uh, I hope you can see why I thought it was uh, the most interesting thing I learned about trees in, in the year 2005. <clears throat> Any questions? You got a question. So you mentioned there was an open problem concerning the intermediate number for the intermediate proof yeah, numbers. Right. Um, now, there are also presumably intermediate Strahler numbers. Yeah. That's are they the same? That, I, I, no, they aren't. Uh, I, I don't think so. But I have, you yeah, know, that, that's right. So, so uh, it's right. That, that was, you, can, you can take a forest and, and, and you can decorate like I did here. Uh, uh, you can put these numbers. This is this is done with pencil instead of pen. It's, I, I'm not quite so sloppy when I use a pencil. So you, so, so so we put this. Uh, uh, we we annotate with each each node uh, how long it's going to survive in the process. Um, 
And if, and if we knew the distribution, you know, how many threes and how many twos and so on are you going to have in this, then, then that, that open problem, we would, we, would, we would know how to do it. And similarly, we can annotate uh, the rivers with the, with the numbers as we, as we saw. Now, I told you how to annotate the rivers. It's easy when a binary tree, if you have a, a K meeting with a K, uh, then it goes K plus 1. If you have a K meeting with a J that are unequal, you take the max of J and K. Um, uh, and and, and uh, a leaf is zero. I mean, a, a, a leaf. The the guy at the bottom is has has no children. Has, has one. And if you have a a, a null branch, you consider that a, a zero. <clears throat> now, but I haven't explained the annotation of of, of this, and that's a, and that's a, a fairly simple rule. How did I know to put a three here? So, so what you do is you, 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 in the forest, you look at the children and you take the max and you see if the max occurred more than once or not. If the max occurred is that only once, then you just pass the max up to the, to the parent. But if the max occurred at least twice, then you, then you add one. And, um, uh, so now, uh, it, it's, it, it, so it's similar in flavor to, to, to the binary tree case, but, but uh, still uh, it required. Um, now, for example, uh, I asked in, I, in preparing last night when I, was, when I was getting ready for this lecture, I, I took this forest and I took the natural binary tree that corresponded to this forest. This this just says go go to your this is a binary tree if you tip it this way, and so you you, you draw links to your sib, to your siblings. The members of the family are, are linked by right links, and to the first child is the left link. And now now I can say well what forest would Zeilberger's transformation take into this guy? This this guy happens to have uh, happens to have Strahler number two, not three. Uh, and the answer was, this is the forest that goes in by Zalberger to this one. And uh, uh, so, at the, so, so we said one is going to be preserved, but then, then uh, uh, this B gets shifted down uh, to, be a, to be a child of three instead of a sibling of three. And then later on, it's going to be shifted down to be a child of six uh, in this correspondence. So, so it turned out this is the forest that corresponds to this tree. And it certainly doesn't, pr I, I got, you know, I got three twos here and I have four twos here. So I, I doubt if these numbers are going to, are going to stay the same. Um, but uh, I think you're right that it's also an open problem for what are the numbers in this, in, in the, um, in the binary tree case uh, for how, how many nodes are, are, of a random binary tree um, uh, get a two in them, for example. I'm, I'm, I, 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 yeah, I, I'm not sure that's. A, I'm, I, I, I haven't. I thought of the problem this morning, just an hour before you did, or you know, two hours before you did. But it's, it's certainly, um, it's certainly a reasonable uh, question, and I, I don't know if it's easy. I know that this other one doesn't seem to be easy, but this one might might be do. I, I, I've never seen that question asked uh, before. Um, as to <clears throat> as if you prune away the the one rivers, uh, yeah, that's a good question. In terms of uh, the binary trees, when they observe them in river basins or the RNA structures. Have they figured out which ones are more common? So, so uh, the the the, the um, geologists uh, are are in interested in relating these n numbers to the to to the qualities of the rocks or the or the, or the terrain, for example. Uh, and so they 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 study the the number of bifurcations between r rivers of order three. The, you know the distribution of the three twos versus the, the three threes and so on, things like that. Um, and they and they and they try to classify that and correlate that with proper with with uh, physical properties. 
um, the, um, uh, the RNA. I, 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 I'm not familiar with with what uh, with what people do with that model, but I think they're they're more interested in trying to uh, observe. <coughs> um, well, I mean, in, in both cases, you, you, you try to. You, you, you try to get familiar with, 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 with uh, distribution that isn't that isn't uniform random, but you say, for for example, here uh, I, sh I showed you these uh, I showed you these trees. It's, it's pretty clear that this tree th this is a different species from this tree, and and uh, you know so 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 you so you know a scientist will try to will, will try to say say uh, can we you know, can we find out some differential equations that would explain the different kinds of stunted growth or something like this that that <clears throat> that occur, um, and then uh, uh, maybe use this for identifying, uh, uh, you know, for for, for finding uh, 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 similarities or differences between different populations, suggesting suggesting some possibly some evolutionary link. So the the, uh, the the paper the, the illustration I showed you it was they were trying to say that there was here, this this one they were trying to say that there's actually uh, not too much difference between E. coli and yeast uh, and 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 they if you, if you disregard you know filaments or something like that but but I, I, I this is, I'm talking only about pure mathematical concepts uh, uh, here but the uh, but, but having having mathematical tools just gives you sort of more uh, more courage to you know, more mental models for which you can you can attack the messier problems of science. Question: um, That in mapping these things, you're going from the the numbers to the logarithm of the height, yeah, and therefore sort of kind of taking heights and grouping them together, yeah. together to map them. I'm wondering if, if you kind of look at the actual height yeah. and what when you kind of go across right, I, that's I, something interesting. Right, I have a rib, a, a, you know, I would have a river that wasn't three but sort of 2.6 or something like this, right? And I was, yeah, yeah, good question. Interesting. Yeah, that's right. So t take a look at the these uh, 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 this bijection, for example, and see if we can think of a of a, of a non integer valued parameter that that uh, that would come out of the so so that you you, you take nested parentheses of height five and 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 that gives you uh, trees that are a little bit uh, uh, less uh, uh, than than those of height six you know, um, in some in some sense right <clears throat> yeah the you could you could say uh, <clears throat> that the uh, well, I, I, I don't know if you have to speculate. <laughs> um. I was just wondering, um, is there any connection between these types of problems and maybe a gambler's ruin type problem? <clears throat> like in gambler's ruin, yes. The, the, uh, the uh, nested parenthesis is equivalent to random walk with a with, a, with an absorbing barrier, for example. <clears throat> Uh, so you're ruined if you if you lose if, if you try to go negative in your capital. Yeah, yeah, and and so uh, uh, yeah, uh, lucky gamblers uh, uh, love trees, and unlucky gamblers hate trees too. Yeah. 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 No more questions. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot one of the jokes I was going to tell you, but I'll, I'll save it for next Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a merry Christmas. Okay.